They don't okay, mind you. Jimmy, you're on. Right, you're on live. Uh -oh. <laughs> We're with St. Mary's Tall Ship Alliance. Uh, we promote and preserve the history of historical tall ships. And we promote them to the Georgia coast. We have promoted the leans to uh, here in Bronzeville. Stay warm, ladies. And we're, uh, oh, we're, we're, we're frozen. our program is to promote a lot more of them. It was and uh, be we've warm. got several tall <laughs> ships that uh, we've got um, to promote that they, we've actually promoted in, and they've they've uh, said they're coming. So we, uh, like I said, uh, the Lynx is an 1812 replica of a privateer that was used in the 1812 war. She was, uh, but the replica was built in 2001, and uh, she sails from uh, Nan she sails out of Nantucket to uh, to St. Petersburg every year, and that's how we were able to get her here in Brooklyn. Well, excellent. Well, thank you. Oh, Thanks for being a part of uh, <laughs> here you many go. adventures with Papa Spin and the Lynx. Uh, uh, Y'all have, yeah, have a good one. Have a good one. Thank you, sir. Appreciate no problem. Y'all right. have a good one. Take some pictures of her on that. Yeah, I will. What about it, brother? All right, yourself? Good. So y'all are the crew? Yes, sir. Excellent. So y'all brought her, brought her down? Yes, sir. So where are y'all from? Are y'all St. Mary's? Or are y'all from where the ship's? Well, crew's from all over. Okay. And the ship is today based between Nantucket and Tampa St. Pete. Wow, that's cool. Excellent. So she was a privateer? She's a re- um, re Repro, yeah. Yeah an interpretation of a uh, specific privateer from the War of 1812. Um, the lynx that was captured during the War of 1812 by the British um, in the Rappahannock River and the Chesapeake Bay. And, um, but, uh, you know, so that's why we actually have as much information on her as we do, uh, just because when the British captured her, they started writing down everything about her because um, they were intrigued why Baltimore Clipper style vessel, which she is, were able to be so successful against the British. Um, and, uh, so, but she was. She looks uh, fast. She is quick. Yeah. She, you know, like with any vessel, though, it doesn't matter whether you're, uh, you know, small vessel, big right. vessel, in the sense of, um, you know, like tonnage. Mm -hmm. The longer your waterline, like the faster you're going to go. Right. And um, so, you know, the. Uh, the thing that makes her difference is the fact that um, this style vessel, because of her hull shape underneath, they're able to get up to speed quicker because they have very little resistance up forward. Um, they have very little boat actually in the water compared to a ship of that time, and especially a ship of the line. Um, and so they, um, and they, just like the master rate, the keel is actually raked. Oh, okay. Uh, and so you have, on this vessel, she draws about nine and a half, mm -hmm. ten feet right. water. But most of that depth is that actually backed by the keel. And so she only draws about four or five feet up the bow. And um, so she can slip very, you know, quickly oh, yeah. forward. But since she has all that depth, she has a lot of resistance moving mm -hmm. sideways as well. And so she also has the ability to point fairly high into the wind, something that most square riggers could do, especially in ships of the line. Mm -hmm. But if you've got on a good, you know, quarter tack, um, you know, action off of a beam or anything like that, and a good 
and stiff breeze, ship the line could easily out for our loved ones, um, you know, because they got more canvas, more waterline, and so what these ships would do is that they, if they, you know, got into a situation, they would never intentionally try and get into a situation with the ship of line. That was not their job. Their job was to go after the cargo ships, go after yeah. the merchant ships. Yeah. But if they got into a situation with that, what their main thing would do is, is they would try and get to a situation to where they would start pointing up and running upwind as much as they could because that's where the ship of the line could get. Yeah, they would, they would stall and they could they could move on. Exactly. Wow, that's neat. And uh, yeah, and try and get out of the range of their guns. Uh, so, you know, but uh, yeah, because you know you're easily going to be outgunned. I mean, because. Depending on what style of ship you had, in the right. sense of the privateers, mm -hmm. uh, and well, and now I'm talking strictly the Baltimore Clipper mm -hmm. privateers, you're also going to just be heavily outgunned. I mean, because their guns that you're going to have on your ships of the line that the British had are just going to be able to reach much further as yeah. well. Yeah. A couple uh, miles out, they're yeah. going to hit, yeah. Uh, so that is a whole other thing. Um, but again, you, um, you know, your privateers, whether they were Baltimore Clippers, whether they were your um you know your fishing schooners coming out of uh new england mm -hmm. whether they were you know your uh, cargo schooners coming out of the uh south down here they were all doing the same thing they were getting letters of mark or letters of mark and reprisal uh that were uh, you know issued by the united states government right. at that time saying we give you permission you know even though you're a private citizen we're giving you permission to go out and attack That's british right. commerce That's right. um yeah and because the united states navy while they you know existed it was small yeah um but a lot of the navy was actually uh were yachts were long to the to the well, navy. they had well they had um six frigates yeah at that point yeah was the main thing that the united states have had at that point and the irony is is that you know what we call frigates were actually super frigates. They yeah. were bigger than what the British considered yeah. frigates. And uh, so in the sense of that time period, you know, being the gentlemanly thing mm -hmm. that war was, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of Western warfare, um, the British, you know, were kind of upset that they were referred to as frigates. Mm -hmm. uh, and because they were bigger and they were, yeah. you know, no, those aren't frigates, those are these things. Right, and, uh, right. But, um, and, but the other thing thing is is that um, you know it was the fact that we had a bit superior material and the fact that Georgia was supplying the live oak that's right uh, to you know make them and you know, super, strong. super strong yeah super strong yeah they're tough yeah. and um, and so uh, but um, wasn't that the Navy won handily every battle I mean there were a couple times where you know the Navy was defeated but I mean uh, it was the fact that you know, the United States on the water was successful during the war. Hi, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.
so that might have been the Sultana. <laughs> yeah, that's up in Chestertown. Scrimshaw and that there was extra time to do detail so that's why there was such detail and I'm sure there must be a little bit of extra time not maybe a lot <laughs> it's nice when we're doing the transits we stand watches so we've got three watches of three people per watch so you're on deck on duty for four hours mm -hmm. and then you're off for eight hours so you okay. get some sleep and do your own thing and so you end up with you know a couple yeah. hours throughout the day where just there's no internet out <laughs> yeah. 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 we got to find Good ways thing. to occupy time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm one of the ones that makes the jewelry, and that's part of what I do with my spare time. Okay. And how long did you come We went to Chestertown for their oh, Downgrade Festival, the yeah. Santana Downgrade Festival. Yeah. We went to our band over here, the Festival. We stopped in Cape Charles. Lots of different sports there. Um, Thank you for stopping here. Oh, yeah. it's our pleasure. <laughs> you guys have offered such a great warm welcome here. So. Where's your next stop? After here, we're heading to St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, oh, that's a long ride. I mean, yeah, it'll, it'll be a me, little but... trip, yeah. Uh, hmm. They're troubled youth or because they're excellent youth. Uh -huh. So we take the whole spectrum of kids. Um, and really, yeah, it's like a teacher recommendation, and then they write an essay for why they want to come join the program. They come out with us for a week. Um, sometimes then they come back and volunteer afterwards if they had so much fun. 
And we've had about 60% of our students that we did those programs with then go on to pursue maritime careers. Really? Because of their experience on the boat. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. We'll do, to Western raise some money, we'll here. come into courts uh, well, like this and uh, let kids come, our people come on and see the ship, and you'll um, do some inch. things okay. like you guys do take uh, people out. And but then we want to do team building, yeah. you know, the community yeah. building right of town. for now, like you're just gonna have to. It's just fun, it's fun later. We'll see, I mean, I'm going to 